Hello. I want to sh share with you this book. This book, Cezanne's Composition, Analysis of His Form with Diagrams and Photographs of His Motifs by Earl Loran is, is a delight. This book is the whole, is one of the reasons why I chose to create an entire nine week class um, analyzing Cezanne's composition, his paintings, because I had this book and I knew I wanted to dive into it and because I, it, I knew it was full of such helpful information. So I knew I wanted to dive into it deeply. And um, I, I, a friend of mine told me recently that like, you know, to learn, if you want to learn something, teach it. And so that is what I have been doing in my spring 2021 class on Cezanne. However, this is such a good book. I also want to share it with the world because uh, it's a book that has information that can be applied to anything. It doesn't have to be like trying to recreate Cezanne's paintings or getting to know him more. But this is a book that is wonderful about, um, you know, learning about Cezanne as well. However, I also think it's a phenomenal book to learn about how you can create composite, how you can analyze compositions of artists that of art that you might admire and then it gives you it provides you with a vocabulary as well which is so helpful so and it's like and what's being an artist i absolutely love that it's an illustrated glossary so it talks you know it defines everything um all of the simple terminology that we use in art and when we're specifically talking about paint, like composition, painting composition, and the like, your picture plane and your picture format, and then like negative space and that that idea of taking a three dimensional view and com com collapsing it into a two dimensional painting, and then of course then you've um, you have the you know the ideas of your negative shapes versus your positive shapes, and then this is this is the this is the coup de gras. I think this chap this pa these um, next couple of pages are exceptional in um, in in analyzing you know getting a good foundation in analyzing all art, be it be it um, like Renaissance art versus like modernist art um, and of course Cezanne's art and it all you know it talks about the idea you know it, and it breaks it breaks your vocabulary down so we can talk about um, about composition in a way that is is has like these fundamental laws or these fundamental ideas our picture plane the idea of having a static plane on you know uh, the static planes those are the planes that are um, that are parallel or orthogonal to your rectilinear picture format. And then you have a dynamic plane, which is a plane that the axes of that plane are diagonal, you know, therefore non-parallel to the picture plane's boundaries. And then how, like, you, you automatically create three-dimensional space with this one dynamic plane and then two static planes but then you actually create a little bit more action a little bit more movement a little bit more like dynamic tension in in your painting when you add another level of dynamic you you change this plane that was once static into a diagonal so it becomes a di um, it becomes dynamic and automatically it creates a deeper sense of field of um a field of depth in this composition but then abstractly you don't have to create true visual depth like like in diagram three you can actually create a sense of visual depth and movement but it's will can be perceived flat um, it's still going to be like flatter than like this diagram because you have a series of overlapping static planes and and you know that creates you know that creates visual depth as well and movement in your painting 
but it's you know it is the that 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 the picture space the space of of this um that this diagram rec represents is going to be a narrower um, visual space than than what this diagram is and then like another the next chapter is or the next diagram talks about the funnel effect or that idea of one point um one point perspective and then like you know if you created a plane that connected there then you'd have three-dimensional volumes going back also in that in that um one point perspective um, Brunelleschi kind of codified our one point perspective in the Renaissance. Um, another way you can create visual depth inside your picture plane is by depicting volumes and by, you know, you, you create, vol you create, you know, when you create that, that volume that automatically creates even more visual depth in your two dimensional picture plane. Now, one thing that like Cezanne, you know, did not follow like true three-dimensional perspective he you know he would distort things and so like for example even in this cube this cube is kind of distorted and doesn't follow the laws of perspective but it still gives you that sense of three-dimensionality and then like you know how can you even create greater depth in your in your picture plane and that is by the idea of stacking your volumes in space to create to create a true like atmospheric depth in your picture plane and then these two these three large like three-dimensional arrows those are arrows of showing that you know that circulation the gesture the movement of moving from foreground to way 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 background and coming forward and that how you can and how three-dimensional space is is wonderful Okay, so um, remember how I talked about how, or I, in this one, how you can create three dimensions, a sense of, of layering and depth by, by overlapping flat planes, static planes. Well, in art, if, you know, sometimes the goal with your painting on your, you know, your, in, on your two dimensional surface isn't so much to create that sense of visual depth, but you want to create visual interest for the eye. And that can be done too by two dimensional movement. The idea is you create an object that moves within that picture plane, but it's two dimensional. It does not recede and it does not come forward. And then with that idea of two dimensional movement, then you can have a scenario where you are m maximizing the idea of both two-dimensional and three-dimensional movement by combining them where you have like the overlapping of static planes but say one of those planes is irregular or it is two-dimensional and it's moving counter to the the three-dimensional movement of your of your diagram and then with with composition you're always wanting to think about like how do you, how do you engage the eye how do you maximize it and you know there's ways to do that you can do it by having rising and falling movements or by you know the linear rhythm rhythm or movement that goes on in the space so like for example you organize like even this in this diagram is linear movement it's you know we move we move from foreground into extreme background and then we come back forward. So that has, that can really provide us with some great, some, you know, great visual interest in our painting. Now, when looking at, at a painting, there's always, um, you always want to be thinking about like creating a sense of balance and a sense of variety to create like a visual tension and by understanding that volumes have axes and those axes um you know have some some visual strength to them and that like regular um volumes might have might can be balanced but irregular volumes also have axes and they too inherently will be organized within something that gives them an equilibrium. Um, in a painting, like in like Cezanne's work, you can also create 
a visual interest by heightening the tension between picture, pl um, picture planes within the picture plane. And, but then we can take, if we want to create something that's three dimension, that feels even more three dimensional, we can take this idea and apply it to the idea of the tension between three dimensional sh sh volumes within our two dimensional picture plane. And one of the things that I find fascinating is like this, in this diagram here, we have the cylinder with circle with arrows around it. And that's giving the idea of what the negative space inside these three volumes and the feeling and what's the movement that those that that the, that object is giving um, as we were talking about that all volumes have an axis you can create tension between your axes in your painting if you kind of maybe um, exaggerate or create like a tipping effect where like maybe not all of your axes are directly vertical, but there might, it might be tipping a bit. And so then that tipping creates a tension, um, a, a sense of movement in your, in the perception of the, of the composition. And then tension with an object. If you have an irregular object, that, that object, the boundaries of that object also creates a level of tension. And then, um, within a painting, you can have like, light and dark patterns they can either be closed or open and so like an example of like a closed one is that like the light is essentially pretty much enclosed by the dark where versus where you have where the organization of your of your open and closed are, are um is is not so um is not so um um, I guess confined or, or, you know, the, the, the shapes have the ability to bleed open. Like also now, if you want to know how he painted and how he worked, this is also an excellent book because it talks about, um, it talks about his, his methodology, how he organized his, his work. And then what, what drew me to this book and made me love this book so much is, are there an, is the analysis is in this book. And for me as a still life artist, it is the still life analysis. I absolutely love this book for how the author took a painting and then proceeded to analyze it in so many ways. Um, you know, this, this one painting is given three wonderful pages and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, um, graphical, you know, di diagrams that are analyzing different principles of composition, which I, I just love. I eat that stuff up. Um, but it's not just still life. In fact, actually, this book is predominantly a landscape book because Cezanne did paint more landscapes than, than, um, than um, still lifes. And one of the things that makes this book so wonderful is that um, Earl Loran lived in um, Provence for a while. And so he actually sleuthed out all of the motifs and took photographs of the motif of these, of like Cezanne paintings. And then he, being the wonderful um, art historian that he was, he then um, broke it down. You know, I mean, he analyzed um, and identified, you know, where things were shifted you know, what, um, what, you know, what did Cezanne do to actually heighten and improve the composition from the source, like the, the artistic, um, photos source. Um, this is like, if you're a landscape artist and you enjoy Cezanne's work, I would say that this is a must read for you guys to, to get this book and to, to find it because it is just such an amazing book. They look at, he, he does look at some of his figurative pieces, but like I said, first and foremost, this is a landscape analysis book and with some still life analysis. And I, you know, really guys, this is such a good book. Another still life analysis. I just, I would just say, go out and get it because it's a great one. And I'm sure, um, 
even though it's all in black and white it is an older book so it's all in black and white but it's so worth it and yeah so Cezanne's composition analysis of his form with diagrams and photographs of his motifs by Earl Loran just an excellent excellent book